the Curious Robin's favorite stuff series continues. And this time I'll show you The Dead of Grass, also known as No Blade of Grass, is a novel by John Christopher that narrates the collapse of society as a new virus called the Changli virus kills all the grass in the world. Millions starve in China, and some have even resorted to cannibalism. Nothing new there. In Europe, people are killing each other for a mouthful of food. Mm, nothing new there either. All around the world, the food market has collapsed and the social structure has been thrown into absolute chaos. It is survival of the fittest now. This novel is notorious for showing the darkest side of humanity when societal norms no longer apply. It makes the reader realize how the simplest of factors can cause everything we take for granted become a thing of the past. The story it portrays is ruthless and at times can be too bleak, making it a hard read. But The Dead of Grass is a great entry into the apocalypse of genre and an overall detailed critique of society and the human condition. A quote that summarizes its themes goes like this. A long time ago, I came to the understanding that all men are friends by convenience and enemies by choice. Fahrenheit 451, written by Ray Bradbury, takes place in a totalitarian society where reading and overall cultural knowledge are forbidden. The story follows Guy Montag, a fireman, but his job is not the one you're familiar with. In this place, firemen are in charge of starting fires not putting them out. They are in charge of destroying any outlawed books that get reported to the authorities. Guy, as most members of this society, has led an nihilistic and hedonistic life, performing his job to the letter, until an incident at work makes him question the nature of his actions and the world around him. Inspired by the book warnings and ideological repression that saturated Europe during the Second World War, Fahrenheit 451 is a tense tale that makes an excellent case for the transforming power of knowledge and art, and why we, as a society, would be lost without them. It proclaims that we need not to be let alone, we need to be really bothered once in a while. How long is it since you were really bothered about something important, about something real? Childhood's End, written by Arthur C. Clarke, is not your usual alien invasion story. By the end of the 20th century, Earth is visited by giant alien spaceships that appear in every major city. This tense and historic moment is followed by the introduction of the Overlords, a mysterious race that claims to be in our planet with peaceful intentions. Humanity is divided. Some welcome the visitors with open arms, while others are suspicious of their true intent. It doesn't help that the Overlords claim they will reveal their appearance in 50 years, when they feel humanity is ready. Clark's narrative progresses smoothly as tensions rise during this multi-generational tale of freedom and humanity. The characters in the story are presented with difficult dilemmas as to how the problems of the world could be solved and if the price to do so is worth paying. Full of surprises and a reflective conclusion, Childhood's End deserves your time and attention. A book with a most excellent premise, written by Clifford D. Simak, City tells the story of an almost unrecognizable planet Earth, where most of humanity has taken to the stars, and the last remaining humans live in a society ruled by intelligent dogs and their robot servants. Originally published as several short stories, the book was then restructured to connect them and create a saga that encompasses thousands of years. Each story unearths the mysteries that slowly explain how our planet got to be ruled by a new species. Extremely original and remarkably emotional, City tells different stories that showcase both the best and the worst of humanity, creating a heartfelt odyssey that feels authentic and ultimately unforgettable, while it tries to answer the following question. What makes a city a city? Is it its people or the structures that conform it? The walls cried out to him and voices cried out as well from the shadow of the past. He stood and listened to them, and now a strange thing struck him. The voices were there, but he did not hear the words. The Body Snatchers is a novel by Jack Finney, in which Miles Benner, a doctor in a small California town, discovers that his neighbors and friends are being replaced by identical copies of an alien lifeform 
that is slowly invading Earth. Written with a tense tone and a fast pace, the body snatchers creates an atmosphere of threat as it puts the main character and the reader in a nightmarish situation. This novel has been adapted several times to film due to its premise being relevant even decades later after its original publication. This is interesting because each of these versions differ greatly from the novel as they are all a product of their era. Furthermore, it is evidence that this tale of paranoia is not only universal but also timeless. Another classic from Ray Bradbury. This collection of short stories is set around the titular illustrated man, a mysterious stranger whose body is covered with cryptic tattoos, each of them telling a different story. What makes this book fascinating is not only Bradbury's excellent writing and sense of humor, found even in the bleakest stories, but the originality in each entry. For example, you have The Belt, where a family discovers their virtual reality nursery is more than meets the eye. The Lone Rain follows an expedition on Venus, a planet where it is always raining. The Last Night of the World tells a moving tale of a marriage that finds out the world is ending in a few hours and how they deal with that fact. The Fox and the Forest follows a couple that has used time travel to escape a military draft from the future. And The City, where a group of astronauts explore an abandoned city that has a will of its own. The Illustrated Man has these and many more stories expertly told by one of science fiction's literary masters and should not be missed by any fan of the genre. There's been a global pandemic. Most of the population is dead. The story follows Robert Neville as the apparent sole survivor of this viral apocalypse, where he must not only contend with being the last human on Earth, but also battle hordes of vampires that resulted from a mutation caused by the same virus. This is I Am Legend, written by Richard Matheson. Hugely influential in the development of both vampire and zombie fiction, this bleak, gothic novel is full of action and suspense that grips the reader from start to finish. Yet, it also finds time to meditate on loneliness and what does being human ultimately means in a world where there is only one person left. Is it worth living if all you do is fight for survival? The book also tackles themes on how new mythology is created, when the parameters in society and its structure change drastically, how are new myths born, and ultimately, what makes the book's protagonist say, full circle, a new terror born in death, a new superstition entering the unassailable fortress of forever. I am legend. Fully explaining the plot of The End of Eternity, written by Isaac Asimov, could very well take a whole video, but I'll do my best. It is the future, and in this era, humanity uses time travel to make sure an organization called Eternity exists. The members of this organization are called Eternals, and our protagonist, Andrew Harlan, is one of them. His job includes traveling to different eras, past and future, to ensure that the timeline always sees the creation of the organization he works for, as all the reality changes its employees perform help reduce human suffering. But all of this comes at a price. It is difficult to say more without spoiling anything, but let me assure you that this novel is as original as you can get in this or any other genre. It features time travel, existentialism, many twists and revelations, and even a heartfelt romance at its core. In the end, it is difficult not to recommend a story that works with such an enormous scope, yet still manages to find the heart and humanity inside it to deliver an emotional and memorable conclusion. If you've never heard of Kurt Vonnegut, well, what a better way to start than with The Sirens of Titan, his second novel. Its first pages include the following quote, The bounties of space of infinite outwardness were three, empty heroics, low comedy, and pointless death. Outwardness lost, at last, its imagined attractions. Only inwardness remained to be explored. Only the human soul remained terra incognita. This quote not only perfectly summarizes the themes of the novel, but lays the ground to what really is an adventure through the cosmos and into the human mind, all in the now legendary writing style of one of the genre's most unconventional voices. The plot mainly revolves around a Martian invasion of Earth, 
but the story also includes a character that lives outside of time, the richest man in the world, an unlikely duo trapped in a cave in the planet Mercury, a mysterious robot explorer that has existed for millennia, and a secret alien civilization that may or may not be responsible for the existence of the human race. If none of these got your attention, then The Sirens of Titan is not for you. But if you like science fiction with the most thoughtful and delightfully dark sense of humor, then you should check out this or any other book in Bon Good's bibliography. And my favorite science fiction book of the 1950s is... It is hard to pinpoint what makes the Martian Chronicles so enthralling. It clearly isn't the science fiction elements, there's barely any of that in this collection of short stories by Ray Bradbury. For some reason there's breathable air on Mars, and you can even find broad rivers filled with water and life there. But in the end, none of this diminishes the value found in each story, which show Earth's population gradually taking over the red planet. What makes this story so captivating is that they reflect human behavior so well as they are charged with emotional impact and themes that should resonate with most readers. Bradbury asks you to suspend your disbelief, presenting stories that are witty, thoughtful, and filled with humanity. The Martian Chronicles shows how high or low we can go. It urges to ask ourselves if we are capable and deserving of salvation even when most of the evidence shows that we are our own worst enemy. It is Ray Bradbury at his most tactful and poetic. And speaking of poetry, my favorite story of the collection is titled There Will Come Soft Rains. It is named after the poem by Sarah Teasdale, a piece of writing that, in my opinion, perfectly encapsulates the themes of the whole book. It goes like this. There will come soft rains, and the smell of the ground, and swallows circling with their shimmering sound, and frogs in the pools singing at night, and wild plum trees in tremulous white. Robins will wear their feathery fire, listing their wings on a low fence wire, and not one will know of the war, not one will care at last when it is done. Not one would mind, neither bird nor tree, if mankind perish utterly. And spring herself, when she woke at dawn, would scarcely know that we were gone. I am Curious Robin, until we meet again.